the meaning of Gethsemane is oil press. Where oil is pressed from olive. If this pressure comes on any believer, no matter how good he is, without preparation, he will be caught off guard. For Adam, or the first Adam, God was coming in the evening. But Adam did not engage that visitation to reveal that tendency. He did not engage that experience with God to let him know what is coming ahead. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are joining from. It's, we are here again on View from the Top. We thank God for how far he has brought us. It's been um, a lot of enlightenment. God has been so gracious to us. Thank you for the comments so far, for the testimonies. We give God all the glory. So today, um, are we ready for today? <laughs> we have a very, very sensitive topic to discuss today. Um, but before I introduce the topic, I'd like to please once more, one more time join us. I'll ask you to join me. Welcome Pastor Dele Eleru and Pastor Yomi Omolayo. Thank you so much. You've been a huge blessing to us over the couple of weeks. Thank you so much. We appreciate you, sirs. <laughs> More grace to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, yeah, thank God for the opportunity. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So, are we ready? Are we ready for this topic? For this question? Let them tap ready, man. Sir? Let them tap ready. Type ready. Yes. <laughs> yes, type ready. In the comment section. Why does it take time for a real child of God to receive baptism of the Holy Ghost? Why does it take time for a real child of God to receive baptism of the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Amen. Are we ready for this? Yes, sir. Amen. By faith. By faith. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Now, this is where enlargement of heart and maturity, they come in. It's very easy to beat ourselves down with so-called knowledge, and I say so-called, adversely. However, we should understand that nobody knows it all. And uh, you may know one thing, but others know many more things. So in all that we think we know, we have to be humble mm. and also be charitable, remembering that you don't know it all. Uh, you will see the need for all these uh, soft landing or uh, water pouring. Water, water, water pouring. pouring. Yes, <laughs> water pouring. We are not landing here. We are just starting. Um, it's important because I realize one of the things that the enemy is using against us is all these very little things that we fight over. Mm. We dissipate energy on them. Mm. And the truth of the matter is, as we grow in the word of God and in grace, you will realize that some of the things that we have fought so hard against are not really worth fighting against mm. because they are not very fundamental to our faith. Mm. Uh, it's good to have clarifications and to press into God to know things better, but it should not be so that we can beat down other brothers and sisters who may have good intentions but may not have the knowledge that we have. Mm. So having said all of that, I want to submit to us that a child of God does not have to wait for baptism in the Holy Ghost, scripturally. Mm. What makes you a child of God is the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I have preached in the early parts of my ministry that you are born again, then you have to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And that's when they lay hand on you, then the, you start speaking in tongues, and uh, when you believe Holy Ghost comes into you, then when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, is when uh, you start speaking in tongues. And I don't, I can't even remember how we used to preach all those things now. And uh, somebody who knew better then could have called us devils, mm. heretics, that we didn't know anything. 
and uh, so we have to be careful and be wary of uh, allowing the enemy to use us in order to beat one another. But I want to submit again that scripturally talking, being baptized in the Holy Ghost means being saved. Mm. And I am not disputing the fact that that term, baptized in the Holy Ghost, uh, can be used for other things, but I would not advise that a term that the scripture used for one thing, I will use it for another thing. Mm. I will completely advise against it mm. because it brings confusion. If the scripture does not use it, it's a different thing. Like Bible, whatever we choose to call Bible, we call it the Bible. We can, I can agree that we call it Bible because Bible does not call it Bible. But if Bible calls something else Bible and we are calling something else, then there's, we are causing trouble. We are mm-hmm. causing confusion. If there's nothing that Bible calls but in the Holy Ghost and we are agree to call the same experience but in the Holy Ghost, that would be acceptable. But if Bible calls it one thing and we are calling it another, I don't think it's advisable. That's my position. Mm-hmm. Do we understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. There's so much to say on this, but... I've promised before we started this session that I'm going to limit to only this session. We can do eight sessions on this or more. Hmm. But we don't have the luxury of time. First Corinthians 12 13. First Corinthians 12 13. And it says, Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles. Some are slaves and some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit. And we all share the same spirit. King James. King James says, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. It is that drinking to the Spirit that is the baptism in the Spirit. And that's what happens to you when you truly believe in Christ Jesus as a substitute on the cross who took all the beatings for you that you should have taken because of your sins. And that he died because of you and he rose again to show that he did not deserve to die, but he died not to pay for his own sin, but for your sin. Immediately you believe that you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Whether it doesn't wait for water, water baptism is supposed to be the outward uh, profession, mm. the outward, uh, the outward manifestation of what we believe has happened on your inside. Water baptism is supposed to be a reflection of that if you decide to do it. But that is not what what brings salvation is that faith. We are saved not by water, but by what? By faith. All right. Somebody say, but that's this John chapter three, five says, born of the water and of the spirit. The The Bible says we are saved by faith. So whatever, whatever elements are involved, whether it's water, whether it's fire, whether it's anything, the salvation is by faith. Are you getting it now? Yes, it sir. is not the element. Mm-hmm. You don't get it. Mm-hmm. It is faith that carries the salvation into you. Mm-hmm. It's not the element. Do we get it? Yes, so sir. at the point of believing, you are baptized into Christ. That's what makes you a member of the body of Christ. Romans 8 9 says, if anybody has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of this. Okay. Mm-hmm. That means it's not part of the body of Christ. He is not baptized into the body of Christ. I understand that what people call baptism in the Holy Ghost is, like I said, I preached it the early years of my ministry too. That, oh, when you, you have believed, but you have not spoken in tongues. So when somebody now prays for you, lays hands on you, and you begin to speak in tongues, eh-heh, you are not baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hmm. I, I will say one or two things that may not be exactly answering this question but are important in answering it and will guide you in your hermeneutics going forward. Mm. Hermeneutics means the way you interpret the scriptures. Mm. 
it is very good for you. So just follow me as I go. So what we are seeing here is a situation where the Bible uses a term for one thing and we are using it for another thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it causes confusion. Mm. So I choose to stay with the Bible. What Bible calls it is what I call it. But this means the Holy Ghost is that you are born again. Mm. So a child of God cannot wait for that. It's not a child of God is waiting for it. Mm. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. I'm sure what this person has in mind is that original concept that I say I sure, have preached sure. myself before. Yes. So I will talk about where that one comes in. Galatians 3 27. Which version, sir? King James. Galatians 3 7. 27. 27. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For yes. as many of you as have been baptized into Christ. You have been baptized into Christ, yes. Are put on Christ. You are put on Christ. You are subsumed into Christ. You are baptized. You are put inside Christ. Are you getting it now? Yes. That's the baptism in the Spirit. By just believing. It is not when you begin to speak in tongues. What happens to somebody who doesn't, be, who doesn't speak in tongues? <laughs> He's not baptized. If you are not baptized into Christ, you are not going to heaven. Mm -hmm. Because it is that baptism that makes us to be one body. And there will not be two bodies in heaven. Mm -hmm. One faith, one baptism, one body. Mm. Not two bodies. Mm. So anybody that is not baptized into that body, which is done by the Spirit, he is not part of the body of Christ. Mm. He is not going to make it. Are we together? Yes, sir. Good. So... However, somebody who believes otherwise, is, is he a devil? Is he an ignoramus? Hmm. Is he, what is, a, a devil or something? No. There are things that are not yet revealed to all of us. Even between when I started talking and now, I might have said something that I will know better tomorrow mm -hmm. or next year. Hmm. Are you getting my point? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. That's why we have to keep our heart open mm. and keep learning and never think you know so much. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, having seen that what the Bible called baptism in the Holy Ghost is actually pure salvation. So that actually corrects that question. Mm. Because that question is now invalidated. Yes, sir. A child of God cannot be waiting for baptism in the Holy Ghost. What makes you a child of God is the baptism in the Holy Ghost. So if you have to wait, you are not a child of God. Mm. Yet. Are we clear on that? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's not make further. Refrain, refrain the question. <laughs> okay, you want to help us? Yeah, so why I does it take time for a real child of God to speak, to in, speak tongues. in tongues? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's clearer now. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. One of the other mistakes that people make, that was not part of my own error. I have to confess my own. <laughs> that people pray that they should have the Holy Ghost so that they can speak in tongues. Hmm. If you are a believer in Jesus, you have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. You have the Holy Ghost. So, it is not praying that you should have the Holy Ghost. You already have the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. That's what identifies you with Christ. That's what makes you God's child. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 says that it is by him that you are sealed mm. unto God. It's your earnest of redemption. Mm. Your, your, your down payment mm. that God has promised total and full redemption for you mm. on the last day. Mm. Do you understand? Yes, so if somebody doesn't have that, it's, that means you're not baptized. That means you're not a child of God. Mm. That's the only guarantee that you make it at the end of the day. Okay, so let's proceed forward now. Let's proceed. Mm. Now, what then is it about speaking in tongues? There are many schools of thought and there are a lot of battles going on, theoretical battles. But like those who have listened to me over and again at the higher levels of teaching, one thing I've always emphasized is that we have to be wary of killing ourselves over these tertiary and secondary issues. Mm. Because uh, God 
brings people to certain understandings over time. Mm. Even what I'm presenting as the best truth today, I may see it better tomorrow. So I should be careful not to think that somebody who doesn't believe exactly what I believe now is a devil just because he doesn't believe what I'm believing. Mm. He believes in the declaration of Jesus Christ as a protection for his sin. He's my brother. Yes, sir. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay, let's press on. Now, what about speaking in tongues? Why is it that some people believe they speak in tongues and some don't? And I said there have been many schools of wars. Not schools of thoughts. Schools of war. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. There have been many schools of wars on this matter. And uh, I don't want to create a new school of war. I want to pre- present a side. Um, this is my understanding, and it's a little bit unique in my narrow sense. So just permit me to speak in a narrow sense, because I don't know all things. I don't know all views. But every view I have been exposed to and I've tried to read as extensively as possible on this matter over the years. Because I wanted clarity on it as a teacher of the world. And I know I don't know all by myself. I've dug deep. All that I've read, I still see that where I'm standing is a little bit, not exactly any of them. And where I stand is this. It can be a combination of some, but not exactly one of the schools of wars <laughs> that are available. <laughs> now, this is my belief. Let's read Mark 16. That scripture, by the time we throw it into the equation of many of the schools of wars, it will destabilize the whole strategy equation. of war. But well, most of the time when we discuss it, we don't refer to that scripture. So many things that look to sit straight, they are destabilized when we bring this scripture in. 15 to 16. I mean, from 16. To Matthew 17. 16, 16. Yes. Mark. Mark, rather. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. How many people? Everybody that believes. How many people? All. I said we are transparent to the works of some schools of war by bringing the scripture in. And it's a scripture that we cannot deny. In my name shall they cast out devils. Are all believers supposed to cast out devils? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, go on. They shall speak with new tongues. How many believers are supposed to speak in new tongues? According to the scripture alone. All believers. True. Yes. Let's go. They shall take up serpents. I'm sure already now those who are larger to be shut down the television now at this point. Yes. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. How many of them? All. Thank you. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. How many believers are to heal the sick? All. Are you sure or pastors alone or evangelists alone? All. All. Okay, note your answers. Yes, sir. All right. I'm presenting my place after years of study on this matter. My position. Because we are trying to answer this person's heart cry. Mm. I perceive this person is yet to speak in tongues and he knows he's a child of God. Mm. Only God knows how many days of fasting and pray- prayer he has done. Mm. Now, we have seen that according to Mark, all believers do what? Cast out devils, speak in tongues, heal the sick. I don't think so. All believers do what? Okay. All believers shall cast out de- devils. So they that means all believers speak. do what? I want to catch yourself. All believers do what? Okay, wait now. Do all believers speak in tongues? No. So what does scripture say? And they have the potential. Thank you. That's they what I'm potential. looking for. They Ken. have the potential. I know some will fight that. There are schools of war that says 
that is not correct and i don't have a problem let me just present my case mm. all right mm. this scripture we have read shows that every believer can speak in, in tongues. tongues do we agree to that at least in the studio here yeah? yes sir because it's pastor daily or because it's the bible it's the bible okay let's go on <laughs> all right now let's go to other scriptures that both agree and disagree with what we have read now because we cannot dig deep by taking only one side mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, let me start from Acts and the warning I want to give, which I promised at the beginning about your hermeneutics. Mm. One of the greatest banana pills in hermeneutics is the book of Acts. <laughs> it tumbles even scholars, not students like us. Mm -hmm. So beware when you are reading Acts. Mm. about the interpret how you interpret the book of Acts. Mm. It's very, very, very delicate to interpret. Mm. But it looks very, very simple. So, that is the greater danger there. It doesn't look complicated. If it's Revelation now, mm -hmm. you know that you are in for big professoral work. Mm. The book of Acts, what is in it? It's just story. It's true. That's the problem. <laughs> it's narrative and not prescriptive. Is telling what happened is not necessarily saying you should do it mm. or you should follow this pattern. Mm. If you are looking for prescription, go to Epistles. Mm. The book of Acts is a narrative. Yeah. Like Matthew, Mark, Luke. It's just telling you stories of what, what happened. happened here, sir. Whether they are right or wrong, whether perfect or not, it presents a true picture of what happened. Yes, sir. Whether that's how it should happen or not is a different thing. Mm -hmm. He's just telling you it happened this way. Mm -hmm. Do we understand? Yes, sir. But we treat it many times as prescriptive. Mm -hmm. Telling us how to live, what to do. Mm -hmm. And now we puncture that very presently. So now for us to know who we ought to marry, we can still be casting Lot. <laughs> Lot was cast in the book of Apostles. Act, yes. Act of Apostles. Yes, sir. True or true? Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. There are more than four ways that salvation was administered in the book, administered in the book of Acts. Hmm. So which one is correct? Are they different? Hmm. Hello. Hmm. In the book of Acts, the only example we saw where somebody lied directly to the Holy Ghost, he fell down and died, is where I fell down and died. Hmm. Those were reports, not prescriptions. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Of how to deal with those who lie. <laughs> I, I don't know how many will remain. I know. Right <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Are you seeing what I'm saying now? Yes, sir. The book of Acts is banana pea that doesn't look like one. So, all this is in the Bible, and this is the Bible is for babies. Mm. We are in the Bible. Who was he said to? Mm. Is he talking to me or is he talking for me? <laughs> Those things were written for us. All right? Yes, sir. They were written for us. They were not written. To us. to us as prescriptions of what to do. Mm. They are records of what happened. Mm. The book of Acts, apart from what I've just explained, or maybe as still is a, a part of it, is that the fact that it's a pioneering, is a record of pioneering work. Yeah. Any pioneering work is not typical of what we follow after. Yeah. If you are a okay. first set of a school, mm -hmm. at least in Africa, and not a private school, mm -hmm. a private school, everything can be said before you are admitted. Mm -hmm. Because things are changing, so I have to adjust my example. Mm -hmm. But in, typically in those days, 30 years ago, you have first set 
of a new secondary school mm. in one village, Ori Longbogo <laughs> High School. <laughs> Hello, brother, you are part time laborer. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. But as the school develops, that will not be the pattern. Are you getting me now? Mm -hmm. Most of pioneering works, they don't continue the day, the way you started the first day. Mm -hmm. First day at work is not typical. That's what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Do you get my point? Sure. And that's what the book of Acts represents. Mm. The initial manifestation of Christianity on earth. Mm. So many things happen there that are not supposed to continue. Mm. Things happen there that God allowed because of the stage of growth of church, yeah. which were not perfect but perf permitted. Mm. So when we read it as a prescriptive book, we will run into an endless fight that we can finish ourselves over. Mm. Can you see why we need lightness of heart now? Yes, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. If I analyze all the places where Peter preached salvation to you, there are some things that Peter said in the book of Acts that the salvation plus. <laughs> that can't save anybody now. I didn't say in the Old Testament. I didn't say in the Gospels. Mm -hmm. In Acts. <laughs> so if you don't understand that and you are repeating what he said, mm. you will not be very correct. Mm. And it's in the Bible. Some of you have been hold and you have been around for some time. You know, I did a message many years ago. Scriptural, but not correct. Hmm. Praise God. Scripture just means that it's in the scripture. <laughs> oh, there's no Everything is in the scripture. That, yeah. Ah, you show me in the Bible. You show me in the Bible. Uh, everything, anything you want is there. Yes, sir. Praise God. Amen. But it's consistent with the spirit of the scriptures mm. from Genesis to Revelation. That's what can form a doctrine. Mm. Are we together here? Yes, sir. Good. Now, why am I taking my time to explain? It's very critical because it's beyond this question. Like I said at the beginning, it will help your hermeneutics in general about the Bible. Now, in the book of Acts chapter 2, what happened in Acts chapter 2 is not typical. It was special. Mm. One of the other things I've preached today is the day of conversion. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other things I've said before was that what they preached, the Bible said, every man had them in their own language. In their own language. So they were not necessarily speaking the language, they were the ones hearing. But I read another man of God that debunked what I believed. And I took you with him immediately because he had superior opinion than what I had. It's not a shame. Because if you go and read that scripture, the ba let's read it. What I miss, he got. And he corrected me. Hmm. I don't have to tell you, but you need to know. So hmm. that we know that we have to keep growing. Hmm. I can just tell you my present position. But you need to know that it's not a shame to grow. Hmm. Yes. Acts 2 or 3? Acts 2, I said. Uh, okay. Read 1 to 4. Okay. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. You don't need sound to receive Holy Ghost now. Yes, sir. You don't need to gather with anybody to receive Holy Ghost now. Mm. Uh, are you seeing what I'm saying in terms of prescriptive and narrative now? Yeah. Let's go. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues. You don't need to see dark. To receive the Holy Ghost now. Like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. They began to speak with other tongues. It's not only that those people were hearing in their tongues. They were speaking in other tongues. That's what they call either Zeluglosa. Or Xelulalia. Or Glasosolia. It's the same. It's just others. Zeno means foreign. Lalia means speaking. Uh, 
Gosa means language. Mm. So you're speaking, they are nearly the same thing. Speaking in a different language or a foreign language that you have not acquired by natural learning. Mm. Are you getting it? Yes, sir. Good. So they were not, they were speaking the language because if we say, listen to the argument now, if you don't learn how to submit to a superior agreement, you will that person will die in error. Mm. This is the argument. If you say that, okay, they were speaking in tongues, not human language, mm. that the people were hearing, mm. but they were hearing their own human language. You are saying actually that those people are operating the gift of interpretation of tongues. Mm. You didn't hear me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they, didn't receive, they have not received the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. So the unbelievers are the ones manifesting the gift of interpretation of tongues because what they are not interpreting is not human language. They are not hearing the human language. They are supernaturally understanding what they are saying in tongues. Mm-hmm. They are the ones operating the gift mm-hmm. together with the apostles. apostles. Is that correct? No. And you are, How can you now be arguing with that? That's a superior argument. You pocket what you have been teaching before. In fact, you burn it. Simple. Mm. That's how to grow. That's how to enlarge your heart. That's how to be a, a true teacher of the world. Not defending where you are now. Because what you know now is what determines where you are. When you know more, you have to make adjustments. Yes. Amen? Amen. Okay. So, he said... Verse 4, they were filled with all, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. They were speaking with other tongues. So people were hearing naturally. Yes, sir. That was not typical. And it's not. It wasn't, and it is not. Do you see that now? Mm-hmm. Trying to explain the issue of Acts as a banana peel. Mm. In homiletics. Are we together? Yes, sir. Good. Let's press on. Now, so this shows us here that this cannot be a prescription for us. Yes, sir. Is that clear? Mm. Somebody says, if you are speaking in tongues and uh, the people are not hearing their language, it is fake tongue. It is not correct. <laughs> but it's not typical. Because God was making a point because it was a pioneering experience. Yes, sir. All right. I think we have explained that enough. Yes, sir. Now, going forward. They spoke in tongues. Don't forget, there's also reference to John 20, 22, thereabout. Is it mm-hmm. John 20, 22? I think so. Mm-hmm. Where Jesus breathed on them and they said, Receive the Holy Ghost. Yeah. They said that is the, when they were saved. But when the Holy Ghost came was when they were both John and Acts are narratives. Mm-hmm. So they are not prescribing how it should be done. Mm. They are telling how it happened. Mm. Are we together? Yes, sir. They are telling how it happened, not how it should be done subsequently. Mm-hmm. When you collect your ATM, card. There are things you do that you never do again. For the first time. Yeah. If you want to repeat what you do the first time, you will never get your money. <laughs> I think it's clearer now. Yes, sir. Okay, let's move from there now. So, at this point, this who spoke in tongues. So, both they were the way they were filled, alright, and the way they spoke in tongues, we are not prescriptive, so we can't use them. Hmm. Are we together? Yes, sir. Good. Now, let's go to First Corinthians 12, which is prescriptive now, mm. not descriptive. Mm. All this. Read from 7. First Corinthians 12, 7. You need to read but, the whole chapter 12, 13, and 14. Mm. But I'm just... Speaking, not speaking. Yes. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to, to profit. With her. <laughs> Come again. I mean, the promise of the stopping man- this now. Yes. Go ahead. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with her. Yes. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Listen, to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge. Yes. 
by the same spirit to yes. another faith yes to another gift of healing yes by the same spirit to another working eh? of to miracles another working of miracles no, no, the, the verse 8 now okay verse 8 to another word of knowledge yes. by the same spirit yes to another faith yes by the same spirit to another gift of healing you see now by the same I know you went around second time, three times, third time, seven. To another, the gifts huh? of healing. The gifts uh-huh. of now you, healing. You, know, you have come out finally. <laughs> the gifts, gifts of healing. Of healing. If I ask you to read it 15 times, now, so you're going to call healing. You're going to call gift. Another time we'll talk about why that happens. Yes. <laughs> so another, the gifts. Of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another designing of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues. It didn't talk. It didn't say speaking in tongues. When you speak diverse kind of tongues, you are speaking in tongues. Mm-hmm. But it's particularly called diverse kinds of tongues. This. I perceive is referring to especially natural languages that you have not learned naturally. Mm. And it could also, in fairness, include speaking in angelic tongues. Mm. Because it says speaking in what? Diverse. Diverse, diverse all means kinds. diverse. All kinds. Mm. So I believe this includes both. Yes. If, are, if English still remains English. Mm-hmm. Are we together? Yes, sir. However, there's a reason why he identifies as devil and he just say to some speaking in tongues. Because I think we have to take care of the, our Mark 16 unfinished assignment. Mm. Okay? Mm-hmm. All right. Here he's saying only some speak diverse kinds of, of uh, tongues. tongues. That one says all men speak in tongues. Mm. Okay. Not diverse kinds of tongues. But mm. they speak in tongues. Mm. Speaking in tongues there is talking about language that are not humanly designable. Yeah. But only designable or designed by God. Mm. All right? We will see more of that in 1 Corinthians 14. Mm-hmm. So, but here it calls it diverse kinds of tongues. That is what he said is given only to few. Are we together? Yes, sir. Let's assume very generously that what he's saying here is not even just speaking human language or he's talking about only speaking in tongues generally hmm. it's the same thing in uh, mark 16 that is referring to here hmm. that it is not everybody hmm. that speaks it how do we reconcile it to hmm. one says all speaking tongues hmm. that believe this one says you can believe and not speak in tongues hmm. are we together here mm-hmm. <laughs> If you have read all the schools of world by now, you will appreciate what we are doing now. Hmm. <laughs> because most of the schools of words leave out Mark 16. Hmm. Are we together? Yes, sir. Good. Now, and somebody says, but you just told us that the book of Mark is also a narrative. Hmm. That statement there. It's a statement that is prescriptive. Yes, sir. Of what will happen. Yes. He said, those that believe shall... Shall be spiritualistic. It's not reporting what happened. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> That's, That's Mark, Mark now. Mark 16, yes. Though the book is narrative, but this is futuristically prescriptive. Yes, sir. So now, if all we speak in tongues there, and let's assume... Diverse kind of tongue is the same, which I don't think so. Mm. It's the same as speaking in tongues. Mm. What does that mean? The question is not balanced. The question is not balanced. Thank you. The equation has a leg. All right? Mm. So that is not sufficient. Let's press a little further. Mm. All right? Diverse kind of tongues. Few have it. Let's assume. All right? That what you call diverse kind of tongues is just tongues, like I said. Mm. And only a few. Let's let let's discount and ask Mark 16 first. Mm. Let's, let's pretend that there is no Mark 16. Mm-hmm. 
And let's believe that what he's talking about here is only speaking in tongues, mm -hmm. not just human language. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Mm -hmm. You know, that makes our journey, it makes our, our assignment easier. Mm. Okay? Good. Please, how many people are supposed to heal the sick? <laughs> huh? uh, are there gifts going... of healing that's given to some? Yes. How many are supposed to operate in faith? Oh. Are there some giving gift of faith? Yes. This is where I stand. And that was what I taught you people when I was teaching you on how to work in the supernatural. This is what I believe. If I have the gift of the gift in me, if I don't operate in any of these dimensions, not necessarily as gift, but if I can't operate in them by faith, it is my problem, not the giver's problem. Mm. If you read verse 10 of 1 Corinthians 12, what does it say? So I know that the working of miracles... Uh -huh. To another prophecy, to uh -huh. another designing of spirits, uh -huh. to another diverse kinds of tongues, uh -huh, to another the in interpretation of tongues. But all these work it, that, that one and the self same spirit. There is only one spirit working them all. That is the only spirit you receive. That is your baptism. Okay, I understand it now. That is spirit that baptized that you. Is, is, is working everything. Is the one that gives some. He might not give you gift of faith, but you can operate faith. Mm. Because you have the giver in you. you might, he might not give you gifts of healing or any gift of healing, so to say, but you can heal the sick. Amen. By the reason of the healer that is in you. Inside of me. Hallelujah. Are we together? Mm. So, the same must apply. Simple logic for speaking in tongues. Mm. A school of war beliefs that all do have to speak in tongues, and we have scriptures to show for it. A school of war believes that all can speak in tongues if they choose to. I bend more towards this hmm. other one. Are you getting my point? Mm -hmm. And why I said I'm not fully in a particular bucket is because of my standing on the issue of the natural tongues and what i see as the difference between speaking in another uh, uh, in diverse kinds of tongues and ordinarily general speaking in tongues i believe what the holy spirit gives as gift to people is a diverse kind of tongues yeah all right but we all have the Holy Spirit that Mark 16 is referring to that makes us to speak in tongues. Yeah. Not necessarily human language yes, that sir. you have not learned mm. naturally. Yes, sir. Am I communicating my stand? Yes, I'm not asking whether you agree, but I'm communicating my position. Mm -hmm. Clear. Good. Mm. Is that clarity I'm looking for? Okay. Good agreement. Thank you. So, with that, I want to personally propose to you that if you are born again, you can choose to speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. It's your decision. The same way, you don't have to have the gift of faith to operate in faith. Mm -hmm. You don't need the fact that you heal the sick. Don't mean you have the gift of healing. Mm -hmm. It's because the healer is in you, and you decided to act in faith. Mm -hmm. Do you see it now? Mm -hmm. So, though. The difference between you and somebody who's operating gift is that he is not he doesn't need any special knowing one scripture. Scripture say I will lay hands. He doesn't need this. There was a boy that used to be in Unilag here. I don't think it's up to 15 years now. The boy did not even know, did not even know he was gifted. They just realized that anybody that was sick, I went to visit them, they would not stay on that bed till night. He hmm. would not pray. Yo, oh, my friend is sick. Let's go and see, say, ah, sorry, oh. ah, you go well, oh. and we leave. People realize that. So, anybody that was sick, they would say, they would carry him. Let's go to all so so so. <laughs> and the thing was working 100% all the time. That's gift. But you that don't have that, you have to remember that God said you will lay hand on the sick, they will recover. And when she is telling you, you are joking. You don't lie. Yes, they say, Father, I receive forgiveness. I heal the sick at the same time. Yes, Do you understand? Yes, sir. That's the difference. Mm. 
you God's intention. Listen to me. Because I want you to see my theology, don't sympathize with me because I'm your father. Because I don't want you to be in error together in case I'm in error. That's why I have you. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, God's intention is to make Jesus out of us. Mm. And Jesus did not, he, so to say, operated, he did not operate in gifts. Mm. He operated in love. Mm. Hello? Mm. And he had compassion and healed the sick. Mm. Hello? Gift is a part of manifestation of God's love for humanity. Jesus operated in the love as a complete rainbow. Not green, red, blue. Violet. The whole rainbow was present. Hmm. So whichever was needed, he applied per time. Mm. Jesus said in John 14, 12, the works I do, you will do. Great Greater works, works than, than this shall you do because I go to my father. Hmm. Hello? Hmm. Was Jesus limited to how he operated in power? First Corinthians 12 is talking about special endowment beyond the natural that you need to use your faith to activate. Are you getting my point? Hmm. But that does not mean because I don't have the gift of healing, I cannot heal the sick. It doesn't because I don't have the gift of faith, I cannot use my faith to do get things done. Mm. It doesn't mean because I don't have the gift of uh, what which one did he mention there? Eh? Prophecy. Okay, prophecy. I cannot what is prophecy? Preaching. Oh, you need to go to first Corinthians 14. You understand that it's not foretelling that he's talking about when he's talking about prophecy in that for, is it is very for I expose that that word. It's talking about preach ability to make intelligible communication of the word of God. That's what that prophecy there is saying. You are speaking on behalf of God. Mm. You are speaking forth the word of God. Mm. You understand? Mm. That is what it is. So when they say you should pray to prophesy, it's saying that you will be able to communicate with effectuality. The word of God. Mm. What I'm doing now is I'm prophesying. Mm. <laughs> Are you getting it? That's okay. why I say when you prophesy, somebody will hear you when it comes to your midst. If I'm going 14, I said, and you will, will be convinced, convicted of all. You will be judged of all. And before that, I say, God is in your midst. Because you are communicating in the language you can understand and in the way it can relate to what you are saying. Yes. You are not speaking in language you just don't understand. Mm. That's what he's talking about. Mm. That's actually what you are doing. When you are speaking in tongues, you are prophesying. You are speaking. Mm. You are speaking uh, 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 unto God. Mm. But in a language that only God understands because it's a communication between you and God. Yes, sir. Do you get it now? But now look at the look at the catch. What I was taught was that is that you have the gift or you don't have it. <laughs> and I don't have a problem with that. But that I don't have gift of healing, I cannot heal the sick. Nobody can force that down my throat. Mm. Because other scripture says, I should heal the sick. Mm. If I can't, he will not tell me so. Mm. And he didn't say, I have to have the gift to do it. Mm. What I need is my faith and the word of God. The word of God. Mm. And that applies to every area of supernatural work. Yeah. Including speaking in tongues. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 14, 13. Can you read 1 Corinthians 14, 13? Is it 13? Yes, I think so. 13. 14, 13. It yes, says, please. Listen up. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. So that means, what is gift to some can be got by others by prayer. Exactly. You didn't hear me. Because, because sure. it's a whole gift to interpret. Yeah. Yes, sir. Tongues. Mm -hmm. But now he's saying you can get it. By praying. If you can't get it by praying, he won't ask you to pray for it. Mm. Okay. That's what informed my position on, the, on working in supernatural that I taught you before. Mm. What I learned had slowed me down in working in supernatural for decades. Mm. I don't have it. I don't have it. I know what of knowledge operation in my life, what of wisdom. <laughs> uh, but this, 
uh, working of miracles. Ah, it's only for evangelists and apostles. You will be an an ineffective believer. Kingdom of God is in power, it's not in words. Amen. You don't be a talker. Hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. He said the works I do, you will do. Greater works than this shall you do. Does he say you have to you have to have the, all the gifts? No, sir. The giver is in you. Amen. So if you can activate your faith, mm. it can manifest to you in any dimension that is necessary. And before <laughs> I land up on this session, on this session, I know I'm still leaving you hungry. <laughs> so I will have to come back. Because either preach and run away, <laughs> lives to, to preach, preach another, another day. <laughs> but before he runs away today, he needs to make some clarifications. Mm. Something for you, more for you to go and think about mm. and work on. Mm. See, he's talking about supernatural. He said, heal the sick. Cast out devils, do all those things that are given by as gifts to some. Mm -hmm. You have to use work your faith up to operate at that point. I get you now. Yes, sir. And that includes tongues. So that's why I believe personally mm -hmm. that every child of God can speak in tongues. Yes, sir. Do you get my point? Yes, sir. I'm not asking whether you agree, mm -hmm. but I might make myself clear. Yes, you are. Very good. Now. So, if you are baptized in the Spirit, which is not what we used to call it, scripture, script, I mean, strictly and scripturally talking, but the Holy Ghost is what brings you into the glory of Christ. That is your faith in Christ that makes you to be saved. All right? Mm. Now, if that has happened to you, then you can prophesy. And to further my position on the issue of operating the supernatural, the same First Corinthians 14. Read from verse 1 to... I, I think I've read it before. 1 to 5. Have you? Um, 14, no. I've not read okay, it. Okay, 1 to 5. That would be good. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. Oh! Desire there is zelo. From where we get it was zealous. Hmm. Be zealous. He says strive after. Chase it. Hmm. Hello? How do you chase gifts? <laughs> How do you chase spiritual gifts? Hmm. Like one of them says speak in tongues and you are not speaking in tongues what do you do by faith he said and he said some people have it as gift healing he said do what pray for it pray for it be zealous for it hmm. you chase it to grab it <laughs> so is anybody sick here is anybody sick here is anybody sick here and you keep laying hands, believing that they must be healed because they say you can do it. Amen. That is how to pursue it if you are not gifted naturally. Naturally, naturally now in quotes. Yeah, supernaturally. <laughs> are we together? Hmm. Are you learning beyond the topic now? Yes, sir. Praise God. Amen. So we are permitted to desire to follow after to chase it. Hello? Hmm. We're permitted. If we cannot attend to it, if not allow us, we'll be wasting our energy. <laughs> so that is why I believe I can speak in tongues. And I mm. prophesy to you. Amen. As you open your mouth now, as long as the Spirit of God is in you, receive the language of heaven and Amen. begin to speak. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you again. Wow. I just pray in the spirit. Haliba kosha balinda re halibro kosha tahim baladi katam homo da zete di abagadosha. Frala da da do zambari kadabosha. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the entrance. Hey, thank you for your word. Thank you for the spirit of prophecy. Thank you for the spirit of revelation. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for insight. Father, we give you thanks because our lives will never remain the same again. Lord would make use of those words, these powerful words that we've heard today, and we'll return with testimonies. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 Shalom. The meaning of Gethsemane is oil pressed. Where oil is pressed from olive. 
if this pressure comes on any believer, no matter how good he is, without preparation, he will be caught off guard. For Adam, or the first Adam, God was coming in the evening. But Adam did not engage that visitation to reveal that tendency. He did not engage that experience with God to let him know what is coming ahead. 